What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is what I watched in August of 2022 because believe it or not, I do find the time to watch other items besides movies that I've never seen before in my entire life. I'm talking about movies I go to the theater to see, at home on streaming, and also movies that are already in my physical media collection that I have seen before. So before I get into talking about what I watched in August, if you are brand new here on my channel, and you love and adore physical media and everything to do with movies, then consider hitting that red subscribe down below as well as that like button, but most importantly, that notification bell so you don't miss anything in the future. So let's start off with what did I go and see in theaters? I got my handy list right next to me because I watched a lot in August, believe it or not. So in theaters, I only went to see two things. So let's start off with bullet train this is the movie with brad pitt on the train fighting everyone so i would heard good things i heard decent things about it i'd seen the trailer a bunch of times because it played constantly before pretty much every single movie leading up into the summer and I want to see Brad Pitt. I want to see him front and center in a movie again. I feel like it's been a while. The last one that I can remember is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I'm not really sure if anything else came out after that that he was in. Maybe I missed it. Maybe I'm forgetting. So I want to see him on screen. The problem with me for Bullet Train, now don't get me wrong, I enjoyed it. I think I gave it three and a half or three stars on my litter box out of five, but there wasn't enough Brad Pitt in the movie. I feel like they sold this as a Brad Pitt focused film, but it was more of an ensemble piece. And you didn't really know that until you actually went and saw the movie. Now there's nothing wrong with that, but I just don't think it was marketed correctly. Because let's be honest, the trailers, pretty much every single scene has Brad Pitt in the trailer. Those are all the scenes that Brad Pitt is in. Maybe an extra scene here or there, but mainly what you see is what you get in that trailer. So I just felt kind of misled just a little bit. But I mean, you know, I didn't love this movie. I didn't hate it. It did have some great fight choreography in there. Obviously, if you're going to do a movie like this, you need to be on top of your game when it comes to the fight sequences. So that was fun. I will probably pick it up when it comes out on 4K, hopefully, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. I just, I didn't love it. I wanted to really love it, but I just didn't. I just didn't get there. I just, ugh, it missed just a smidge, unfortunately. The other movie that I saw in theaters was Bodies, 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 and I know this film has been like trashed a little bit either you love it you hate it you kind of i don't know like it feels like there's really no in between either you love it or you hate it it, it is an a24 title kind of the main reason why I, why I wanted to go and see it it's a slasher film horror movie that's right up my alley it's got pete davidson in it i'm thinking if pete davidson is going to be a victim in this this is something i want to see so i was intrigued by it and that's why i wanted to go and check it out Unfortunately, it just didn't live up to the expectation again, kind of like Bullet Train, that I wanted it to get to because I was looking forward to the film. None of the characters are likable at all whatsoever. You're not rooting for any of these people. They're kind of this big friend group where they're all like richy rich kids. They're snobs and... They don't like each other. They're not really friends with each other, even though they say that they are. They're just super fake about it. And it's just, I don't know. It kind of left a bad taste in my mouth just a little bit. And it does have that twist. And I enjoy a good twist. I'm not going to say what it is in case you haven't seen it. I don't want to spoil it because it's still out there. But I felt underwhelmed by the twist. Was it creative? Yes, I will give it that. It was a creative twist. But it just wasn't good enough for me. So, I mean, Bullet Train and Bodies, 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 I kind of felt the same way about. I went in really looking forward and I left underwhelmed by both. I gave them both about a three star out of five on my letterbox. So am I still going to pick them both up? Yeah, <laughs> that's what the sad part is. Yes, I will still pick up both of them on physical media. All right, let's move on to streaming. What have I been watching on streaming? 
a lot. August was stacked with brand new releases on streaming and I was binging. So starting off with The Staircase on HBO Max. This is based on the docu-series documentary that was on Netflix. This is a 13 part documentary that was on Netflix, an eight part limited series on HBO Max. This is the true crime murder case of Michael Peterson and his wife, Kathleen, played brilliantly by Colin Firth and also Tony Collette. Now, apparently this trial was all over the place. I kind of vaguely remember this when it happened but I, I, I was fuzzy. I was fuzzy with the details. So it was good to go back and watch this limited series. Now it's kind of confusing in parts only because it does kind of go back and forth between time. You're in 2017 and then you're back in time with flashbacks and yet then you're current again. So if you're not really paying attention, that can be a little confusing, but if you're really into this case and you're following it, like I was every single episode, I was like staring at it. Like what's, Who's lying now? What's happening now? I mean, I'm very much into true crime. I like cases like this. So this really held my attention and I just really enjoyed it. So much so that I'm actually thinking about watching the documentary over on Netflix now. So The Staircase on HBO Max, if you guys haven't seen it, and you're into true crime, then I do recommend it for you. So let's move on next to Prey on Hulu. This was an amazing addition to the Predator franchise. Now, I can't really dog the other films because I've only seen the original Predator one time. But from what other people have said, what I've heard, other people's reviews, Predator 2 is like just okay. And then the other films, forget it. Like they're garbage, they're trash. But I always want to keep an open mind, so obviously I will watch those movies. I have them. I just haven't seen them yet. But this film, Prey, was so awesome. I snuggled into my bed, hit the start button, and I was glued from beginning to end. I thought this was a great addition to this franchise, kind of resetting it where it belongs. Now, this is not an actual sequel. It's it's a prequel. So we're going back in time and I believe 300 years or so. And the focus is on a girl, a young girl in Comanche, I believe, Comanche tribe. And I just thought it was amazing. Let's shift the focus onto a female, younger demographic, which is so awesome to see fighting the predator which was so awesome and amazing and i think that this is just a shame that this movie was not in theaters because i believe if it was put out in theaters especially in the month of august this would have done amazingly well because the word of mouth on this film was so unbelievably strong this was a missed opportunity and people going forward in the future that make these decisions on whether these films go in theaters or go on streaming, they should be double thinking about, or rethinking, not double thinking. They should be rethinking their choices because if Prey was in theaters, this definitely would have made a ton of money. I think everyone watched this movie in its debut weekend because it was the highest ranked ever on Hulu. So I really enjoyed Prey and I hope you guys watched it too. Okay, next up. She-Hulk on Disney+. Plus. I mean, we're not getting in depth into this. It's She-Hulk. It's comical. I have not yet watched the third episode that just dropped, what, a couple of days ago or yesterday, but I, I am keeping up with it. I watched the first two episodes. Tatiana Maslany, I think she's doing a great job as She-Hulk. I know there's a certain scene in the third episode where a lot of people are turned off by it. So I'm already prepared going in. I already know what I'm going to be seeing, but I'm enjoying the episode so far. They're very quick. They're only 30 minutes long. It seems like they go by in 20 seconds. So that is perfect for me. I need something that I can watch, get in, get out, move on to the next. So, so far I am enjoying She-Hulk. Next up, Orphan and Orphan First Kill. So Orphan First Kill premiered on Paramount Plus, limited theater run, but mainly on Paramount Plus. And I wanted to check it out, but I'd never watched the original Orphan before. Can you believe it? So I decided, I bet you can, I never see anything. So I decided to make 
a double movie night out of Orphan and Orphan First Kill. I heated up my pizza. I was all excited. I snuggled in my blanket, sat on the couch, and I just had an amazing double feature. Now, mind you, with the first Orphan, I knew what the twist was going in. This film originally came out in 2009, so I obviously know what the twist is. But it was still awesome when it was revealed. And then going into Orphan First Kill, you're thinking, how can they top that? Like, what are they going to do? What is the spin? What the twist? What, what are they going to do with it? I did not see that coming. I don't think anyone saw that coming. It was such an amazing and unique idea. I'm not going to say what it is because just in case you guys want to watch it, it is still new on the service. So I don't want to spoil it for you. But it is worth it. They did an amazing job with that twist aspect that like I just did not see that coming. As you can see, I still I love originality like that. And that was that was that was something <laughs> that was something right there. But the most important factor is that you have the actress playing Esther is now obviously older, but we're going back in time as this is a prequel to the original film. So how are you making her look younger? And I really respect the fact that they did not CGI her face and make her look younger. Everything that they did was practical effects. And let me tell you something, they did an amazing job with it. I feel like today we kind of rely way too much on CGI. We need to go back to originality, go back to practical, because honestly, just like with what I said with Jaws, this is why it's still the best shark movie of all time, practical effects. So I really enjoyed my Orphan double feature, and I highly recommend that you have one too, because it was a fun night. Let's move on next to They Slash Them on Peacock. Yes, I watched They Slash Them, even though I had heard not so great things about it. I had about an hour and a half to kill in my schedule, and I said, you know what? Let's watch this movie. I was intrigued by it because Kevin Bacon. We're back in a camp setting. I'm thinking Friday the 13th vibes because he was in that movie, and obviously I love that movie. So I was just curious, what is this film going to be? Now, the problem with this film is that it's quote unquote a slasher movie but the big problem is we don't get to the slashing until well over an hour into the movie now when the film starts we have an incident that happens where okay you know we're in a horror movie it is a slasher okay and then as we're going forward we see the kids arriving at the camp kevin bacon is introduced and everyone else the counselors what have you okay, we're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting. When are we getting to the murder and the, the killing and the slashing? The last 20 minutes. That's when everything takes place is the last 20 minutes of the movie. I almost gave up on it, but I was like, you know what? I'm way too far in. Why am I going to give up now? So I just finished watching it, but it needed to happen way earlier. And then also, I'm not really sure why Kind of in the middle, they decided to go high school musical vibes because at one point, all of the campers are in the same camp, in the same uh, building at the same time, and they burst out into spontaneous song and dance, and they all know the same choreography, they all know the same song, so that was a little like, you don't fit in. You don't belong there. What are you doing? This is a horror movie. This is not high school musical. So that was just it just didn't fit in I'm not really sure if the movie really knew what it wanted to be or not but yeah it just it wasn't that great I don't recommend it don't watch it don't waste your time I think I gave it a one star on my letterbox so let's just move on to Samaritan my man Sly Stallone over on Amazon Prime has a new film called Samaritan it actually just dropped this past weekend now I'm not gonna spoil anything because it is brand new Basic concept is Sly Stallone walking around, regular Joe, but for some reason, this young, I think 13-year-old kid thinks that he is this superhero named Samaritan that was supposedly died in a fire 25 years ago. So this is what the movie is all about. I enjoyed it. Again, I believe this was a missed opportunity. This film should have been released in theaters. Sly Stallone is still a name. He's still in great shape. He did fantastic in this film. 
And I believe it would have pulled in money at the box office, especially in the month of August, where really nothing was coming out with a lack of new releases and a lack of anything interesting. Both Prey and Samaritan could have performed well. I think Prey absolutely would have made over $100 million. And why not give Sly a chance? Why not give Sly a chance? So it's just a shame that a movie like this unfortunately just landed on Amazon Prime, but I enjoyed it. I thought it was decent. I gave it three and a half stars on my letterbox. Finally, I told you I watched a lot on streaming. So finally on streaming, also on Amazon Prime, I watched this movie called Lisa. Now a little bit of a story here. So my friend Mika on Instagram she posted that she was watching this film uh, a couple of nights ago, I think. And I messaged her and I said, is this on physical media? Because I remember it from my childhood, pure nostalgia. And I was like, is it on physical? She said, I don't know, maybe. So I was searching on, um, on streaming and I found it on Amazon Prime. I couldn't believe it. Out of all the streaming services, I found it on Amazon Prime and I just hit the play button and I watched it right then and there because I had not seen it in probably 30 years or so. I remember watching it when I was younger and I remembered every little bit and every little detail. So that was fun to go back in time in my memory bank and watch something from my young teenage days. But it is, just to let you know, it's kind of like a, it's not really a horror movie, but it's kind of like a stalker, psychological, one of those types of movies. You have a young girl named Lisa, who's kind of boy crazy, and she likes to call guys and kind of tease them. But the problem is, in this movie, her next target is a serial killer. Okay, so she kind of gets involved with this guy, and I'm just gonna zip it there. So you guys, if you want to watch it, it's over on Amazon Prime. So that's everything that I streamed. Whew. Now, what did I watch from my physical media collection that I've already seen before? Now, mind you, these are all pretty much musicals because August was musical month here on my channel. So really quickly, one of my favorite musicals. I have two favorites and this is one of them, Chicago. I adore this musical. Renee Zellweger should have won Best Actress. I think it's a crime and a shame that she did not win. She worked so hard in this role for this part. Catherine Zeta-Jones, absolutely fantastic and amazing. I love it. If you haven't seen Chicago, what are you doing? Watch this. It is so good. So good. <laughs> On the other end of the spectrum, we have Cry Baby with Johnny Depp. This one is not so good. It is... A guilty pleasure, 1000%. It is tacky, it is trashy. My cat just came through the closet, that's not a ghost. But every once in a while, as guilty pleasure, it's fun to watch. Little shop, little shop, a horror's little shop. Love this one too. It's so quick, it's 90 minutes long, and it's just pure fun. So I always have a great time revisiting Little Shop. What more can I say about Moulin Rouge? Love Moulin Rouge. Can't watch it all the time, though. I do have to be in a certain frame of mind to watch this film. But when I'm there, oof, I am there. So good. Soundtrack is amazing. One of the best soundtracks ever in film. The Greatest Showman. Obviously, you guys already know how I feel about this one. It is, unfortunately, a rotten tomato but I have no idea why, because the soundtrack of this is absolutely incredible. Hugh Jackman is amazing. I've already talked about it, so let's just move on. <laughs> to Grease and Grease 2. Yes, indeed. Talk about guilty pleasure with Grease 2, but I don't care. I enjoy it. The songs, not so good as the original, but that's okay. It's always good to have a great time. Go back in the past and relive. Just relive. Here is my other favorite musical of all time. I have two, like I said, Chicago, and the other is Rocky Horror Picture Show. I have been watching this one for 30 years now, and every single time I watch it, I never get bored. I'm always entertained by it, and mainly that is due to Tim Curry's performance. He is so good in this part. No one else could have played Dr. Frankenfurter. There is no way 
I I can't even express how much I love this musical. I just love it. I am I adore it. I adore it. I'm obsessed with it. <laughs> Next up is Yesterday. It is not a musical, but is but it is music based, so that also counted for my month for August. I hadn't watched this one in a long time. Watch it with my mom. She enjoyed it. So I'm happy that I revisited yesterday. Okay. Here's the fun ones. <gasps> the Child's Play Movies. Oh, I was so excited to get these in. So these are an early birthday gift from Mama Blu-ray. Part of my early birthday gift. There's more on the way. But this is part of it. And I told her that I wouldn't dig into it. And I totally lied. <laughs> because she's on vacation right now and I know she's gonna watch this I'm sorry mom I couldn't help it I had to dig into these because you know I'm all about the horror movies right now so yes child's play one two and three very nice transfers on all of them I know the whole controversy about the smudging on the inside mine were actually okay so knock on wood no problems there the Wizard of Oz. I was totally obsessed with Judy Garland this past month. I was watching everything Judy and why not just watch The Wizard of Oz as well, especially in 4K. It is gorgeous. So if you do not have Wizard of Oz in 4K, I highly suggest that you pick it up because it's amazing looking. And finally, oh, exhausting, right? How do I watch all this stuff? La La Land Steelbook. So when I first, I've only seen this movie two times in my life. The first time I watched it, regular Blu-ray, still, motorcycle, still looked fine. Good picture on it. I wasn't over the moon about it though. And I thought I was going to be all about this musical because I enjoy musicals and I love Emma Stone, love Ryan Gosling. Their chemistry together that they have is just so natural. I adore it. And I thought I was really going to enjoy this. But the first time I watched it, I was like, kind of underwhelmed by it. I'm like, okay, uh, it didn't knock my socks off. So watching it a second time, 4k, great 4k transfer. I felt the same. I felt the same. I thought I was going to really enjoy it a lot more. But I don't know. There's just something about me and La La Land that does not click together. I don't know what it is. It has all the elements where I would supposedly love it, but I just don't. I could probably go the rest of my life and never watch this movie again. I'd be happy. <laughs> I mean, that really says something. Uh, I mean, you guys know how I feel about Emma Stone winning for, you know, her Oscar for this. I don't think it was deserved. It was a good performance. Yeah, but Oscar worthy? Compared to the other nominees that year, no. She just won because she was the quote, quote unquote it girl of that year. So that is the reason why she won. That's my belief. Don't hate me down below in the comments. Don't kill me. Don't, don't annihilate me for saying that. But it's not my favorite. It's not my favorite. And I just don't think it ever will be, unfortunately. So... Sorry, La La Land. But that is everything that I watched in the month of August. I honestly don't know where I find the time to pull this off and watch all this stuff, but I make it happen. So let me know down below, what did you watch in the month of August? What did you go to the theater to see? Streaming at home on your own physical media? Don't forget to like and subscribe before you leave, and I'll see you next time.